Our pet cat's actually overlords plotting our demise. Is Learn co-host of the Rizzuto Show tempting fate by having two pet cats of her own? And can rock stars be cat people but still be rock stars? All that and more today on the Number Two Show. Welcome back to the Number Two Show. I'm Rafe Williams, and tonight we unravel the mystery that has puzzled humans for millennia. Why do we serve cats when they clearly should be serving us. In our quest for answers, we dive tail first into the world of whiskers, paws, and absolute disdain for human beings. So follow me through the glory hole for today's main topic, cats. It's truly bizarre, isn't it? These creatures stroll into our lives, use our homes as their personal litter boxes, then climb on our counters where we prepare meals with their little ammonia pee-pee and dookie paws, and we're just okay with it. They got the run of the place, and why? Because every once in a while, these little claw machines rub up against my leg and purr on their way to hide a turd inside my pillowcase? No, not him. He's the turd inside of a claw machine who is facing a legal my pillowcase. Different thing, but he definitely seems like a cat guy. The internet. The digital realm of endless knowledge and innovation is ruled by these furry despots. I'm convinced if cats had opposable thumbs... They'd have already enslaved humanity and slowly given us a thumbs down in a cat coliseum like the Roman Emperor Commodus as they fed us to their overgrown lion tiger cousins. At the very least, they would use those thumbs to send a strongly worded email to our employers asking them to, quote, pay this fucking loser I live with more money so I can stop eating this fancy feast bullshit, end quote. I'm pretty sure that's what they're already clacking away on our keyboards and all these cute cat videos. They're not just hacking up hairballs, they're hacking into the mainframe. Their dominance online is inexplicable. A cat and a banana peel, a cat startled by a cucumber, a cat just fucking sitting there. Millions of views, tons of heart emojis. Meanwhile, scientists are solving the mysteries of the universe and all they get are comments like, good job on the Mars rover, but you're still going to die a virgin, dorks. Vape got out. But to understand how this came to be, let's claw our way back through history, shall we? From the annals of history. Cats, the notoriously nonchalant creatures, have been sauntering through our civilizations, winding around our ankles and our cultures for thousands of years. In ancient Egypt, cats were divine, symbols of mystery and guardians of the afterlife. The Egyptians worshipped Bastet, the lioness goddess symbolizing warfare, protection, and uh, partying. A rather eclectic mix, don't you think? Imagine a fierce warrior standing vigilant guard while playing WAP on a baby grand piano with a giant pile of cocaine on it. Actually, I would go to that party. I think Kid Rock would be there. Fast forward to the medieval times, and cats had a public image issue associated with witches, dark magic, and all things spooky. Unfair, maybe. Maybe. But let's remember, these are creatures that stare blankly at walls and then sprint chaotically and hiss for no apparent reason. <laughs> Full disclosure, I identify as a non-cat person, so I struggle to comprehend the world's collective adoration for these puzzling creatures. The only cats I like are cartoon cats. Sylvester, Garfield, Heathcliff, and them Cadillac cats that lived in the junkyard. Hello Kitty, Tom from Tom and Jerry, and that poor little black cat that couldn't stay out of white paint and kept getting sexually harassed by Pepe Le Pew. You know what you did, Peppy. They worm their way into our homes, assert dominance over our furniture, and then, in a devilish twist, manage to become the sovereigns of our World Wide Web. The audacity. What gives them this godlike status on our screens and in our lives? But here's the flaw in my apprehension. Despite their aloofness, there's a peculiar charm to their nonchalant anarchy. An enviable rebellion against order and routine that I secretly wish to embody. Cats are almost constantly telling us defiantly to go fuck ourselves and keep scooping their poop balls and waiting on them hand and foot. So why are we so bewitched by these furry enigmas? My theory? Cats actually invented the internet just to disseminate their propaganda globally. Think about it. What better way for them to subliminally manipulate us into absolute subservience than by making us addicted to their nonsensical antics? And it's brilliant because while we coo at their calculated cuteness, they're plotting. Plotting to overturn the status quo. Where they're the pets and we're the masters. In their eyes, we're merely the clumsy butlers, the Alfreds to their bruises, and one step away from being usurped. 
Did you know your cat plotted your demise three times today before breakfast? It's guaranteed. Who will save you when the feline uprising begins? Perhaps the secret lies within the heart of a successful cat parent. Which brings us to today's special guest. If anyone in my life is going to change my mind, it's her. My good friend and Riz Show co-host Learn is joining us to share her first-hand knowledge from the fluffy underbelly of the cat world. But first... Welcome back. My next guest has successfully navigated through the whims of our would-be rulers more than most. She's the co-host of the Rizzuto Show, My Spirit Animal, and self-proclaimed cat whisperer. Please welcome, Learn. Hi, Ray. Hi, how are you? I'm great. How are you? It's been a while since I saw you, about five minutes ago when we got off the air at the Rizzuto Show, I'd say. That's true. It's nice to not see you because there's a wall in between us. And thank you for coming to the number two show. I appreciate you. You're welcome. Is this a glory hole? Oh, you better believe it's a glory hole. I wouldn't have a bathroom without a glory hole. <laughs> Has anybody ever shown you anything through the glory hole? What do you mean? Like their dicks? Yeah, of course. I've seen several. Would you like to see my pussy through the glory hole? <laughs> I thought you'd never ask. Whoa. It's Clover and Willow. Well... Cute. Not what I expected, but still cute. All right, Learn, I brought you on here to sway me, to turn me into a cat person. Okay. To make your case. So I'm going to ask you some questions. I just want you to give me honest answers, okay? All right. All right, bud, here we go. On a scale from one to crazy cat person, where do you currently stand? I am a crazy cat person. Okay. Straight up. Okay, so an 11? Yes. What, what makes you a crazy cat person? I love my cats more than people I know. Okay. All right. If cats are said to have nine lives, which life is your cat currently on and why? Well, they're living their best lives, Rafe, and uh, they are on their first life. Actually, Clover is probably on her second life because she had intestinal surgery a couple years ago. Oh, Can you tell me why your cats mean so much to you? Well, Clover means a lot to me because my aunt found her on her back porch, and I believe that she is quite possibly my grandma Imogene reincarnated. And Willow <laughs> came to me in 2020, and he was picked up on the side of a highway in Kentucky by my friend Amy's mom, and he doesn't have like a full tail. He has a little hook tail. Mm. And so, you know what? He's on his second life too now that I think of it. Um, but yeah, they're just the best. They lower my heart rate, and they make me happy all the time. And you got them at a very uh, uh, pivotal time in your life, right in the middle of the pandemic, right? Yeah. I think the only way to go through a world pandemic is to have an animal by your side. And cats are just really clean and resilient and warm. And so I think that if I would have been going through the pandemic without a cat, especially two cats, um, I don't know if I would have made it. Now, you haven't swayed me yet, but it does make sense. In one word, explain the allure of cat videos on the internet. Cat videos can warm your heart because if you're not a cat person and you're interested in cat, we'll call it ethnography, and you've always wanted to know, like, what are cats like, you know, when they get the zoomies or what, what are cats like when they're, like, licking up raw meats in, in broth or, you know, what, what's it like to sleep with a cat? What do they do in the middle of the night? I, it's a great way to kind of go inside the mind of the humans that live with cats by showcasing what they do when they're just alive and coexisting. Interesting. That was not one word, but I'll take it. <laughs> like a crazy cat lady, she went on and on about the cats. Uh, <laughs> next question. If your cats ran for political office, who would run for president, who would run for vice president, and what would their campaign slogan be? Well, Clover would be the president, and Willow would be her vice president. Why is that? Well, she's just alpha. You know, she's crabby. She really puts them in line. She's older. Okay. Um, and she, honestly, people are kind of like catist. People think Clover's a boy cat, I think, based on her tortoise shell coat. Mm. And everybody thinks Willow's a girl cat for whatever reason. Nobody's seen that 1980s movie starring Val Kilmer. Um, but no, I... Clover's just alpha. There has to be one. They're very territorial, and she gets the job done. She really keeps everybody in line. Okay. What would their campaign slogan be then? No mice ever. <laughs> no mice ever. 
three e you know what that works we've we've learned anything from previous elections it's that simple 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 communication ideas tend to win the day all right uh if you had to trade places with your cat for a day what's the first thing you would do oh man You know what? Honestly, I would take a shit in that litter box. <laughs> that is the first exact thing that I would do because I've never done that before. I've never actually climbed into a big sandbox. Have you ever gotten drunk and thought about it? No. Like Not I would even never once. I would never do it as a human. But if I were a cat, immediately shitting in the litter box. Okay. Well, you know what? I appreciate your honesty because that is a very honest answer. Uh, if cats secretly ruled the world, what would be the first law you think they'd enact? No more lasers. <laughs> Full laser pointer ban. Good luck getting that past the NRA. All right. If your cat could speak for just one day, what's the first question you would ask them? Are you my grandma? <laughs> That's the first question you would ask is, are you I'm a Jean? You have, legally, you have to tell me. It's like being a cop. You wouldn't ask him anything else about the animal kingdom. Your immediate ask would be, are you my grandmother reincarnated? I guess I would also ask, can you read the minds of other cats? Because cats do not meow at each other. They meow at humans. And that's kind of evolved through time or so I've read. And so I would want to know how cats communicate with each other. Is it through mind reading or is it through their eyes? Wow. That's deep. Thank you. Great questions. All right. In a movie about your cat's lives, what human actors would play them and the other lead roles vis-a-vis -vis you? Hmm. Okay. Live action. Live action. Learns cats. So I get a role. I get an actor, too? You get an actor to play you, but you have to pick two human actors to also play your cats. Okay. Well, clearly, I am being played by Kate Beckinsale. Um, Hell yeah. Clover is being played by Meryl Streep. Okay. <laughs> Good choice. Willow is being played by John Krasinski. Okay. And what a pairing. My husband would be played by Paul Schneider. Is that the guy that actually looks like him from The Office? Yes. Yeah. All right. That makes sense. That all checks out. Been, are you hungry for that John Krasinski, Meryl Streep collab? Well, Disney, phone lines are open. All right, next question. If your cat wrote a memoir, what would the title be? Cat memoir. Memoir. It would be a cat meowar. Okay. And it would be called Only Sleep at the Head. <laughs> Only sleep at the head because they sleep on your head. Is that why? Clover sleeps at my head. Willow sleeps at my feet. And I feel like he gets kicked a lot. Okay. What song best describes your cat's attitude on a lazy Sunday afternoon? Sunshine, lollipops, and rainbows. Everything that's wonderful is what they got when we're together. I don't know if those are the lyrics, but. Wow. That was pretty really good. good. What, is, what song is that? Uh, I think it's Sunshine, Lollipops, and Rainbows by Leslie Gore. All right. Now, you know what? That sounds like a fun Sunday afternoon. Thank you so much for sitting on the crapper with me here on the Number Two Show. You're welcome. Thanks for inviting me to sit and be in the crapper with you. Uh-oh. <laughs> you know what that sound means. It's time for the wrap-up. Well, there you have it, folks. Cats have woven their way into our webs and hearts, always leaving a trail of fur behind. They're a paradox wrapped in a mystery, wrapped in a cute, fluffy package that occasionally scratches us if we dare to pet them the wrong way. If you've managed to watch this without your cat casually strolling across your keyboard, consider yourself victorious. Smash that like button like your cat smashes your hopes of having nice things anywhere on your desk. Subscribe, share, and tell us about your feline overlords in the comments below. I'm Rafe Williams. Thanks for watching The Number Two Show. <laughs>